Welcome, everybody, to the first Great Scott video podcast. To celebrate this special occasion, Mike talks with the legendary Cape Crusader, Bert Ward, about his life as Robin the Boy Wonder, his giant breed dog rescue, and his all-natural dog food. How's it going, Bert? Fine, citizen. Uh... Actually, um, you know, the, how this, you mentioned the dog food, well, how this all came about is that my wife and I operate the world's largest giant breed dog rescue. Uh, since uh, 26 years ago, 1994, uh, my wife Tracy and I have rescued more than 15,500 dogs, wow. all of which would have been put to sleep if we hadn't been there to rescue them. Now, the dogs that we uh, rescued were giant breed dogs, Great Danes, St. Bernards, Irish Wolfhounds, like that. Uh, ultimately, we now rescue 45 different breeds, ranging from tiny two pound dogs, all the way up to our giants, almost 300 pound Great Danes and, and Irish Wolfhounds. So we've been, we've been saving all these dogs, 15,500. Everyone has lived in our house. At all times, we have a minimum of 50 dogs. That's five zero not one five fifty dogs in our house we feed 600 pounds a day and the reason we got into dog food was we we saw that these giant breeds in particular have very short lifespans irish wolfhounds only six to eight years great dane seven to nine years and even most dogs die you know 10 to 12 years so um and, and we said there, there's got to be something we could do because these are loving animals they love you unconditionally and we first developed a feeding and care program. We actually feed and care for dogs differently than other people do, all of which came from having 15,500 dogs in your house over a 26 year period. And this is 24 seven, you know, they're not in some yard, they're not in some building, they're in our house. I got 20 some odd just in this room with me here right now. But so we developed a feeding care program, which really started to work great. We added about three years to each dog's life. I mean, that, even that's tremendous. But we decided, what if there's something more we could do? So we figured since we had all these dogs, we would make the finest food possible. It wasn't our intent to sell it. It was our intent to feed these dogs to keep them from dying so young. If we could make the finest dog food in the world. So we spent a lot of money, like $4 million over a period of time uh, of our money to, uh, to create this amazing food that's different from every other dog food. And in a nutshell, we were hoping to had, add a year or two to each dog's life, but something happened when we made the food. We found out what other manufacturers do that is just so upsetting. They all put extra fat in their food. I mean, uh, you, you know, they, dogs, will eat more if there's more fat in the food. And actually, it's kind of a thing happened with humans. If you remember about 10 years ago, uh, the movie Super Size Me, where uh, the guy went into McDonald's and ate every meal for a month, gained 55 pounds and almost died. A high fat content creates what we call empty <laughs> calories. It makes you hungry, you put on weight, but you get very little nutrition. So long story short, we created Gentle Giants Dog and Puppy Food. And the amazing thing is that we have dogs on this food consistently living twice their normal lifespan. Some of them living up to 27 and a half years, running around like puppies in their mid twenties when no one else in the world has been able to do that. And we have videos, we have all the medical information and documentation. We have everything to show that what we've actually accomplished. And so what happened is, as you know, you rescue all these dogs and you're adopting them. The people that come to adopt the dog, they'd come here and they'd see a, an 18 year old Great Dane, which, you know, nobody, almost nobody's ever seen, including any vet. And they say, well, what are you feeding that dog? Oh, well, we make this special food. You know, we, we just make it for our dogs. They said, well, no, wait a minute. I, I'm not going to adopt a dog from you. If I can't get that same food, I want my dog to live as long and as healthy as your dogs. Mm -hmm. So we said, oh, all right. Well, now, wait a minute. It, if we actually make this food and we sell it to you, uh, we're going to have to comply with labeling laws and all the kinds of stuff that you have to do when you sell a product, which we did. And, and first thing you know, everybody that's adopting a dog, of course, <clears throat> wants our food. Why would they want a food that can only keep the dog living, you know, 10 or 11 years when the dog could possibly live 27 years, you know, uh, and be running around like a puppy. 
Absolutely. So everybody wanted our food. And then other people heard about it and stores sort of started contacting us. And first thing you know, now we're all across the country. We're in uh, all the Targets. We're in Walmart uh, and many other places on online everywhere, you know, Chewy.com, PetSmart.com, Petco.com, Target.com, Walmart.com, TractorSupply.com. We're everywhere, including our own new sh store called um, GentleGiantsPetProducts.com. Is there, <clears throat> was there a special ingredient inside the food that uh, you put in there to have the dogs live as long as they do? It is a combination of two things. One, it's the finest ingredients, sparing no cost to get the best of the best. We've never had a recall, unlike uh, every other dog food company that has. Uh, and the people that make it for us have never had a recall. And when you use the very best ingredients, all USA, you know, it's the best of the best. And you don't have those problems if you stay. I mean, for example, we get our chicken from Tyson, the same largest chicken supplier in the United States. And when you go to the market, there's Tyson chicken. We don't get it from other sources. So we go out of our way to make the best of the best. And in our case, because my wife Tracy and I consider this a charity, our charity, we don't take any salary from this. So therefore, because we're not taking money, you know, as salary for doing this, we save the people who get our food a lot of money. You know, I mean, in other words, they're basically are able to buy General Giants for roughly half the price of going to a pet store to buy a similar food. Uh, so, but but they won't keep your dog living 27 years. So our motto has become half the price and twice the life. And just starting now, this week, we've just now come out with our new cat food. And we have, uh, we've been testing it for a year. We actually, even though we're known for dogs because we had 15,500, uh, our cat food, we've had four to 500 cats in the last 26 years. And uh, last year, two of our cats died. One was 31 years old and the other was 32 years old. Unheard of. Guess what they were eating? Our you're, dog food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were eating. Now, we, we know that cats need more protein. There's certain things that cats need. We, we know that. So we had regular cat food there, which was about 25% consumed, but 75% of what our cats were consuming was our dog food. So we know that our, our dog food is really terrific. So what we did is we took the basic formula, completely converted it to be for cats, but with the same superfoods in the food, you know, same high nutrition, everything the best of the best. And already we've, uh, with the year of testing of our cat food, it just produced amazing results, healthier, happier cats. So yeah, this is our charity. And, and, and like my wife and I say, you know, our motto on our bag is love for our precious pets and our precious planet. So this is all about love for animals, love for people, we want to make a better world for all of us. And it's our charity. We don't take any salary. And I was going to say, it sounds like that uh, you're an animal lover. I mean, through and through. It's oh, like, yeah. oh, yeah. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> to live with 15,500 dogs 24-7 feeding 600 pounds of food a day. I mean, just to give you a, a perspective, 600 pounds of food a day is 16 of our big bags. Just think of what it would take to lift, carry, and pour 16 big bags, okay? And then, of course, clean up from 16 big oh, bags. Yeah, I mean, it's a major undertaking, but you know something? These dogs are all healthy, they're happy, they all get along, uh, and you, as you can hear, there's no noise behind me. No. None of our dogs are trained not to bark unless they sense danger. Wow. So we have an incredibly peaceful, quiet thing. In fact, when people would come here to adopt a dog, the first thing they'd say is that we can't find the rescue. Oh, I, I see it's here. Yeah, but we don't see any dogs. No, no, because they're all inside our house where they want to be. And they said, they will stop for a second. They listen. They said, we don't hear a single anything, not a bark, not a peep, nothing. Well, they're all trained not to make any noise unless, you know, they sense danger. And and people actually look at me like, and my wife is, oh, are you really, I mean, you really have a rescue here? And then we start bringing them out. And when we bring them out and people are like saying, it's like, this is like going to the circus and you see that little tiny car pull up in the middle of the circus and all these giant people get out of it. These dogs just keep coming out of your house. They're just like, I mean, we're, are you recirculating the dogs, taking the ones in the front and bringing them back to the, no, there's just a lot of dogs in our home and they all are so loving. They, they are nurtured by our love for them. 
and they're good to each other. We don't have any dog fights. We don't have any issues. We don't have any house breaking, breaking problems. All of our dogs are just wonderfully trained and they love each other. And, and part of, I believe, the fact that they're living so long and so healthy is the environment in which we've created to maximize the nurturing environment combined with the special feeding and care program, which people can go to our website, gentlegiantsdogfood.com, read about special feeding and care, how we feed dogs. Michael, we don't feed dogs like other people feed dogs. And people say, well, how, how can you feed a dog differently? Well, for example, we feed every dog here a minimum of five or more times a, a day, smaller, more frequent meals. Why do we do that? Because we found that when dogs eat less than five times a day, okay, and they have these bigger meals, that the effort of digestion prematurely wears their bodies out. Dogs' bodies wear out faster than humans. So just like if you had a drought where you didn't have water, you would conserve water, we conserve our dog's energy. And how do we do that? Smaller, more frequent meals. Also, we elevate their food and water dishes, okay? Every dog has a specific height that is best for them. And that height is such that when they come over to eat or drink, they don't lean down, they tilt their head down. And, and why is that so important? Well, because if they have to lean down to get food and lean down to get water, that's the, that they're using up energy, up mm -hmm. and down and up and down at every meal, right? Every day, that's and they true. wear out sooner. And so people ask me, I don't understand how, how my dog can barely walk and he, he's 10 years old and yours are running around like puppies in their 20s. It's because we have applied science and we, pre, you know, we don't prematurely wear their bodies out. So those are the things we do, all of which is explained in detail on our website, gentlegiantsdogfood.com, on that special feeding and care program. Plus, another thing, GMOs. I'm sure you're familiar with genetically okay. modified organisms. Well, on our website, we have a video that we didn't produce. Fabulous video put together by very prominent veterinarians all across America. They got together and they put this video together. And vet after vet keeps saying the same thing, which is 20 years ago, our, we had saw one or two cancer cases a month. Now with genetically modified food that is being fed to dogs and cats, we're seeing five to 10 cancer patients a week. It's terrible. So we have no genetically modified organisms in our food. And there's only, I think, one or two other companies in the whole industry that are, are like us, that have no genetically modified. But then we also have so many other things and we don't have this massive amounts of fat. And, and for your viewers or listeners I, I, that have a dog or a cat, because now we have our cat food, go feel your, your pet's food. See if you, when you rub it in your fingers and then put it down and rub your fingers together, if you don't feel that slightly greasy feeling. It's, it's not overwhelming, it's slight. Well, what you're feeling is animal fat that has been sprayed onto the food to make your pet hungrier, to eat more food, to make you buy more pet food. Now, people say, well, how bad can that be, Bert? I say, well, it's killing your dog. And they say, well, how, how can it be killing my dog? I say, think of it this way. Would you take a can of bacon grease or chicken fat and pour it down your garbage disposal at home? Oh, of course not. It would clog it up. That's right, because you know that unlike water that evaporates, animal fat coagulates. And when it hardens, it's like cement, okay? So when you realize that animal fat will ruin a metal garbage disposal, what do you think is happening to the arteries and intestines of your dog? When you feed a food that every single meal, every single bite, every single kibble is encapsulated in animal fat. We don't do that. And the great thing is, great thing is that dogs' bodies will reject that fat. It takes about a month to get out of their system. But we, our food doesn't put it back in. Whereas the other foods just put it back in and the dog never has a chance to have the long life that ours dogs have. And that's the difference. It's the best ingredients, the best technology, and with lots of love. And that produces the results we have. I'm, I'm going to choose your food over that, that Dick, Dick Van Patten guy. <laughs> well, I'm sure he's a very nice guy. I don't think he has anything to do with making of the food. But it, it's the concept yeah. of do what's best for the dog, not what's best for your pocketbook. 
okay? And what's best for the dog is pure nutrition. No chemicals, no preservatives. You know, these are all things that people know. And one more thing we do that nobody else to my knowledge does. And that is everybody, all the other companies have warehouses full of dog food and cat food that could have been sitting there for weeks or months, okay, before it's shipped to a retailer. We don't do that. We only make to order. We make it fresh to order. Every single day of the week, of weekdays, we make our food fresh. The next day it is shipped out. That's how fresh it is. It hasn't been sitting there for weeks or months, okay? And so therefore, our theory is the sooner your pet eats gentle giants after it's freshly made, the better the nutrition. And with our canned food, everything in the can is fresh. This, the chicken, the beef, the day it comes in is made, not even, not even refrigerated to the next day. This fresh salmon, wild caught Alaskan salmon, wild caught tuna, you know, not pond uh, fish that could have mercury in it. Everything we've done is the best of the best. And how much uh, does it normally go for? Uh, Price-wise, yeah. uh, our biggest bag is 30 pounds and it sells uh, for about 34 to $35 for 30 pounds, all natural, unheard of. You go into a pet store, uh, last time I looked, 22 pound bag was uh, $55. 26 pound bag or to 28 pounds was $65. Ours is 30 pounds for $34, $35. That is really half, half the price, yeah. yeah. And, but the most important thing is your dog has a chance to live many more years. And I, I'll tell you something, Michael, the only complaint we've ever gotten is people say, you and your wife, you're so into these dogs and cats. Why don't you do something for people? And I said, wait a minute here. If I help you keep your dog or your cat an extra five or 10 years longer, you don't think I've done something for you? Well, wouldn't you put it that way? I guess so. So it, you know, it, it affects everybody because we love our animals. We love our pets. And, and especially if you have a child. I mean, so many people get a dog you know, for their child. And, and by the time the child is 10 or 11 years old, the dog may be gone. And now you're having to explain death to a, a child where our daughter, our daughter, okay, we got her a dog when she was a year and a half, the dog was six months old. She's had the dog for more than 20 years, the same dog. I didn't have to ever go to her to give her bad news. And she, and, and so therefore, I mean, what a great thing for a kid, right? To grow up Absolutely. with their best friend for over 20 years. Now, you said that uh, you had branched out for the last year to, to cats now. Are you uh, going to continue trying to branch out to different animals? Well, actually, I don't know if we'll make food for them, but we do feed them. Let's take, for example, we have horses, okay? Now, the average horse lives to 25 to 28, maybe, maybe could reach 30 years, very infrequently, okay? We've lost, when we've lost a horse, it's always been every single one was over 35 years. 138, 135, 136. But this is already like, you know, 25% longer. And what is it we're doing different? We're not feeding a different hay. We're feeding smaller, more frequent meals. Most people feed their horse like once or twice a day. We feed our horses, same principle, a minimum of five or more times a day, smaller, more frequent meals. And I'm sure you know, horses like to graze. I mean, when they're out in the wild and they're in a pasture, they're like grazing all day long. Well, that is really better nutrition and better for their system than to eat one or two big meals. So Bert, I, uh, I have to ask you about Batman. <laughs> you, uh, you're definitely uh, the, the boy wonder and uh I'm beginning to wonder yeah <laughs> uh and i was reading how you read you had a 51 year relationship with batman himself mr adam, adam west yeah one of my you know it's so funny because i wanted to be an actor i was studying acting professionally studying at ucla i was selling real estate for my father on the weekends uh, he was my father was a prominent uh, real estate broker in beverly hills california and so I would, what they call sit on the houses where I would go to a house every Saturday and Sunday and I'd spend two or three hours in one house and two or three in another. And so I'd cover like three houses or four houses a day and spend about eight hours where I'm just waiting to show the house to people, answer questions. And uh, one of the people that came uh, and bought a house was a very 
well-known and respected movie producer. And I got a chance to talk to him a little bit and told him what I wanted. And he said, you know, um, I'll help you out. I'll send you to an agent. And he sent me to an agent. And uh, I went to an agent and uh, I, I was a little bit chagrined when the agent said, well, I can't get work for the actors I've got. You know, I would never take anybody new. And if it wasn't for this famous producer, I wouldn't be taking you and don't expect to work for a year. And if you get a job, you're going to probably have one line and all of this kind of stuff. You know, not really very encouraging <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. So, yeah. but I, I said, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and then a couple of weeks later, I got a phone call from someone in this agent's office who said, uh, there's, uh, there's something going over 20th Century Fox. Um, we got an appointment for you tomorrow at 3.30, go to the gate. And then they gave me the address and the gate number and all that stuff. And I did. And, um, you know, uh, they let me park on the lot and then they sent me to one of these bungalows. It's like they use these little buildings as their offices. And I went in, I was introduced to the casting director. I talked to him for a couple of minutes. He said, would you like to meet the executive producer? I said, sure, why not? I mean, I figured everybody got to meet the executive producer. Well, that's not true, but I didn't know that. So I was introduced to William Dozier, the executive producer, and I walked in, I said, hello, sir. And I shook his hand, you know, uh, aggressively, but nicely. And I think he was taken aback because most actors have been so, <laughs> so rejected. I mean, their egos have been so destroyed by the time they get a chance to get a part. I don't know how they emotionally survive, but I hadn't been. So I wasn't damaged. I just went in, hello, sir, how are you? And he looked at me, he said, well, you're kind of big for the part. I said, oh, but sir, I promise you, I won't grow anymore. Okay. And he laughed. I mean, how are you going to keep from growing? Right. So, I mean, ultimately what they did when I got the role is they cut the heels off my shoes and they put four inch heels on Adam. Okay, who's already six foot three yeah, and made yeah. him six foot seven, you know, and, and I'm five, seven and a half, but you know, right on the ground, no, no, no heels or anything. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, and I was introduced to Adam 15 minutes before our screen test. We actually screen tested together. And after five minutes of talking to Adam, the two of us started laughing. We never stopped laughing for over 50 years. We just got along so well. He had the most amazing sense of humor, you know, and, and it, it, it's a terrible loss, you know, that he's gone. But, but you know, I love him. We had so many good times together, even on the weekends sometimes uh, with our families. Uh, he and I go out and play tennis on the weekend and, you know, people waiting at a public court and seeing us playing tennis. And all of a sudden they look and say, oh, my God, it's Batman and Robin playing tennis. <laughs> But we made appearances together. We worked great together. You know, like anybody else, we, 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 we just, you know, we have real friendship, you know? It was just a real friendship. And, um, you know, there were, you know, everybody goes through tough times in life. And if he was down about something, I'd try to, you know, cheer him up a little bit or vice versa. And we just got through it every day, you know? And it, I, I will tell you this, when you work under these hot lights, and in those days, when we made Batman, they didn't have the cool lights like they have now, okay, that are, you know, you're, you're not hot. Yeah. They had these giant arc lamps. I mean, my God, the thing is, it's like a searchlight on a giant pole, and it's so hot. And it's like you got three or four of those lighting up a huge set. And, you know, in two or three minutes, you're like sweating, yeah, you know, in your yeah, costume. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like not comfortable. And, and I'll tell you something, though, by the by the afternoon after being in that costume about six or eight hours and you're trying to do your lines, something funny could happen or something could say something or you get kind of punchy. You know what I mean? <laughs> and we'd start yeah. laughing and the, oh, the directors, they were panicking. One director, we laughed through nine takes. This director came up. He says, you two are going to laugh me out of the business. You know, <laughs> and we're trying to not not laugh but i look at adam and you know and it's i've been in the heat all day long and i look at him and through his mask he actually looked cross-eyed okay it, it, it he wasn't cross-eyed but it, in the way the mask fit on him made it look cross-eyed which made me laugh and in turn he said i look like a raccoon with my mask on you know <laughs> i mean and the two of us would laugh and we try not to laugh and the more you try not to laugh you laugh i mean but we got through it and we made all our shows and we had a, I will tell you this, we were left alone as to how we delivered our lines to each other. 
which is very rare. Most directors say, oh, no, no, can you say it this way? Or can you, you know, do this or do that? Or, and other than telling us, hey, you're in the Batmobile or you're in the Bat, you know, uh, the, the Bat Cave or you're outside this building. Other than that, we were left to do our own lines the way we wanted to. So he would say something in such a way and I would counteract based on how he spoke, you know? So it was so real. It, you could never pre-plan it to make it like that. And I never knew exactly how he was going to say his lines. And so everything was very real and very spontaneous. And we knew our lines and, you know, boom, it just clicked. It just clicked. So I have to ask you, Bert, um, all of those holy words, uh -huh. none, of those, none of those holy words never really made sense that the holy, whenever you said like holy, like not like Holy Spirit or Holy Bat or something. But uh, was all that, uh, was that improvised by you? Sometimes, but no, actually, I will have to correct you a little bit. It did make sense. For example, we were in a spaghetti factory, and I, I had a line like, holy ravioli, Batman. Oh, that, yeah. So there was a tie-in to what we were doing, you know, uh, and, and, but the, the writers didn't always get that tie-in, and that's when I would be able to make the suggestion, which 99% of the time they agreed with, uh, you know, well, let's, let's say it this way, because this makes a little more sense with what the scene is, you know what I mean? Yes, it was an exclamation. There was over, when you count our Batman movie we did, there was over 400 of those between the TV series and our first Batman feature. 400 of those holy, different holy? Yeah, holy this or holy that. In fact, you can go online and somebody, there's a few people that have actually cut every one of those holies out and put them in this <laughs> very long thing that takes about 10 minutes. And I, holy, I do every one of the holies that you can you can see it and you know where they literally cut my the video and put it in of me saying this and that and next one and next one and next one you know over 400 i mean it takes like 15 minutes to see it now there's a story about uh about you bert uh you had uh delivered a harvard commencement address uh -huh. and uh i think you may know what i'm talking about already and then there was someone who, oh, yeah. who asked you a question and uh so I'll, so I'll let you take it from there. Well, no, I know what you're talking about. In 1984, I was voted man of the year at Harvard University. What an honor, okay? And I went there to speak, and I had my costume. I wasn't going to wear it because when I wear the costume, I'm actually in character, you know, for kids and stuff. So, so I, I had the costume hanging up. And uh, during my speech, a couple of the Harvard students came up and said that they were with the, the security and that they needed to keep an eye on my costume because there was a report that somebody might want to try to take it. Well, they're the ones that took it, okay? And uh, <laughs> and uh, the, the guy that did it, the ringleader, was named Conan O'Brien, which uh, obviously we all know who he is. And But it's true, absolutely true. And I got it back the next day, and it was all in fun. But I was a little upset about it because that was ultimately donated to charity for like $500,000. So it wasn't chump change. That was a valuable costume. Absolutely. So you also had the uh, had a distinct honor given to you uh, earlier this year. You got your own star on the Walk of Fame. Yes, yes. January 9th, um, uh, a tremendous honor that uh, finally, uh, I mean, actually, I waited like 50 years. I, I tell people, you know, I am a very patient person. But 50 years? I mean, wouldn't you say that's an awful long time to wait <laughs> to get something? 50 years? You know, so, uh, but I, I, it was a great honor and I was thrilled. Um, and it's amazing that actually the way it works on Hollywood Boulevard uh, is that every other star faces the opposite direction. So if you're a, a, a visitor walking and you see a star with a star's name on it, the next star is actually facing people coming in the other direction. But the star after that faces you. You see what I mean? So that people going in both directions get to see, you know, the names faced correctly to them. Well, what they did with Adam and mine, they actually made them where they face each other at just about the same distance. It's a little shorter distance than the normal distance. And they face just in the same position as though we were doing our dialogue together. So when you see my star there, and, and both of them are right in front of the, um, uh, the Guinness uh, Museum of World Records, which is uh, really cool, you know. Uh, we've all heard about the Guinness, you know, book of World Records, but this is the Guinness Museum of World Records, and right out there in front, Burt Ward, Adam West, 
and uh, we're you know it's a great honor, and I'm really thrilled about that. So, uh, speaking of uh, Adam, Adam had a great career um, <clears throat> in in show business. He went from Batman to at the end being mayor. Mayor. Yeah, oh yeah, of Quahog. Yes, uh, yes. Okay, yeah. In in, in you know in, in the family. Uh, family. Uh, yeah, Family Guy. That which is uh, oh, he did a great job. It uh, Adam was a funny guy, and he he got along with the uh, creator Seth MacFarlane, and you know, that was yeah, it was a great thing. I've watched that show many times. It's very good. So, did you ever have you ever made an appearance on Family Guy? Like, uh, have they done a Batman Robin spoof? At no, all? no. Oh, Adam and I were together on The Simpsons. Okay, Adam and I were together on uh, um, let's see, Futurama. We were together on, uh, oh, what's SpongeBob. 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 Uh, we were together on, uh, then we had this one that was uh, on Adult Swim. Robot Chicken. Robot Chicken. <laughs> My wife in the background is coaching me. I forgot. <laughs> I miss more. So many. I, I've done like 40 movies for television I've starred in. And, and, but these, these were animated. And then, of course, Adam and I did the two feature-length films for Warner Brothers, um, with a full-length feature that were released by Warner Brothers. Uh, Adam, of course, did the Batman voice. I did Robin. And in the second feature, William Shatner played uh, uh, Two-Face. And so here you had in that most recent one, which is like a couple years ago, that you got the two most iconic television shows in history, Batman and Star Trek, Star Trek with the actors working together. That was really cool. Wow, it definitely yeah, it definitely sounds like it. So, so Bert, I have one final question for you, sir. Um, what advice do you give to someone who wants to get into the to the entertainment realm? I know that things have changed ever since the time that Batman and Robin was on, but uh, is there anything that uh, any advice you would give to someone? Absolutely. Here's what it is: study, study, study. Get every, if you want to be an actor, get every book on acting that you can get get the famous Stanislavski method acting, get, get into some classes, try to get a variance of classes because not all the teachers are, are great, but study, 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 because then if and when you get a chance, you've got to deliver. You know, in other words, you might only get one good chance. And the other thing is persistence. I can't tell you how many people give up, you, but the ones that, that make it never give up. Absolutely. You could be rejected 500 times and in 501, you got the shot, you know? So you got to keep plugging away and you, and you just got to understand that your product is yourself. And so therefore, if somebody doesn't like your product, I mean, it's not that they don't like you personally, they, they, they don't fit, think you fit for the role Absolutely. or whatever. But if you studied and you've made the best of what you have, you've got the very best chance. Absolutely. Well, Bert, uh, thank you so much for your time, sir. God bless you, and uh, stay safe where you are at. Well, thank you very much. And like we say on Batman, to the Batmobile, citizen! <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's a good line. Thank you, Bert. All right. Well, take care. I've enjoyed the interview. Thank you, sir. All right. Bye-bye now. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, tell your friends and have them like the Great Scott Podcast Facebook page.